lost about eight, eight, 85 pounds she lost. She's uh, looking a little better. Of course, that's the goal for a lot of us to uh, create better health for ourselves. And uh, today we we're going to talk about something that kind of gets us stuck once in a while, and that's stuck habits. Stuck habits. And uh, I'm going to have, I'm going to play a video by one of our great pros in the Optavia company. And uh, that's, that's uh, uh, Fry, Nick Fry. And I, I know him personally because I had a lot of these same issues that we're talking about here today. And uh, so we're going to get right into this. First of all, uh, the following PowerPoint may contain personal testimonies from Optavia health coaches or clients, and every person is unique. You are all unique, and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. But keep in mind, these presentations are my own and derived uh, from many health professionals, and uh, they are not substitute for professional medical advice. This is our recommendation that you consult with a physician before starting a weight loss program, yours in health coach Fred. And keep this one in mind. Your current thoughts are creating your future, your future life. What you think about the most or focus on the most will appear as your life. So keep that in mind. And that's kind of, you know, we've talked about this before. And uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit uh, for, after the end of the video. So here we go with uh, Nick Fry. And I just think he's super awesome. The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Octavia coaches or clients of Octavia. The results related in these messages are basically unique experience. And I'm going to skip that part. I'm going to skip that part because I already did the disclaimer. So here we go. You can see that. This says we are a go, so that's good news for me. All right, so as I said before, we're going to be talking about changing stuck habits tonight, how to change the habits that are really hard to change, right? Those habits that are really hard to change. So if we've never met before, my name is Nick Fry. I am the behavioral specialist here at Octavia. I am a licensed clinical professional counselor and a certified health education specialist, and my role within the Optavia community is I'm a resource for coaches. I provide service, support, I provide behavioral health-related information and coaching skills recommendations. Basically, my area of expertise is all the behavioral, psychological, emotional aspects of getting help, of getting help, right? So let's get into the information tonight. I'm going to be talking to you all about stuck habits. Well, what are stuck habits? What do I mean when I say stuck habits? I mean, they are the habits that are really hard to change. They're the habits that you believe are a part of your identity. And they're the habits that have stuck around for many years, hence the name stuck habits, right? So what are some examples of stuck habits? Well, have you ever said this to yourself? I've always been a late night snacker, or I'm such a procrastinator. I've never been a good sleeper. I never eat breakfast. I always forget to drink water, right? So these are those habits that seem to stick around to be part of us. They're just kind of part of our identity at this point, right? I, I'm such a procrastinator. Oh, I'm one of those people that never eats breakfast, right? You can hear the always, nevers, things like that. That's going to be important as we talk about that. Uh, <laughs> so these are just a few examples of what I'm talking about when I say stuck habits. All right, so let's break it down. Well, stuck habits work just like any other habit, right? They have four parts. There's the cue, the routine, the reward, and the craving, right? Every single habit has these four components, right? And this is from Dr. A's Stop, Challenge, Choose ebook. For those of you that want to learn a little bit more about this thing called the habit loop. 
He's got that information. And Dr. A's stop challenge choose ebook. So there are four parts to have it. You got to break it down. What's the cue? What's the routine? What's the reward? And what's the craving? Those are those four parts. You got to understand the habit before you can change it. You have to understand what's going on. You have to become aware of what you're doing, what's happening before you're able to change the habit. But that's not it. It's not just the four components of the habit. It's what you're telling yourself as well. As I said before, have you ever said any of these things? I'll never. I always. I'm such a, I should, I can't. These are really powerful things that we say to ourselves, and they're part of our identity. Now think about these things in context of stuck habits. I'll never be able to change that. Or I'll always be that. Or I'm such a... And these stuck habits become such a part of our identity that is a big part of what makes them very difficult to change. So, how do we change stuck habits? Well, first and foremost, we have to deal with all four parts of the habit all four parts. You got to deal with the cues. That's the thing that kicks off the habit. You got to deal with the craving. That's that desire or the urge to do the habit. You got to deal with the routine, which is the actual habit or behavior itself. And then you got to deal with the reward. What do you get from it? We're all, we always get something from the habit. Pleasure or relief. Pleasure or relief. We're going to go into a little bit more detail of that, what that means. But if you always get something from a habit, whether it's a good habit or an unhealthy habit, you always get something from it. So you have to deal with each of these components if you have a really difficult or stuck habit. All right, so let's go through each of these four components and what we can do to deal with them. We're going to start with the cue. Remember, the cue is the thing that kicks the habit off. That's the trigger that gets you going, right? And so we have to learn how to deal with these triggers. We have to learn how to deal with these cues in order to be able to begin to change a stuff. The first way that we can deal with the cue, I'm going to talk about four different ways. I call them the four A's. We're talking about four different ways to deal with triggers or cues, perhaps. And the first one is avoid. Avoid people, places, and things that trigger the habit. Avoid people, places, and things that trigger the habit. So that means beginning to learn how to say no to people that don't support your health goals. Is there that person that says, hey, you wanna to go to the buffet after church this Sunday? No, I'm working on me. I'm working on my optimal health. I'm doing this different thing now. And that's okay to say no. You're not saying no to the person, you're saying no to the unhealthy thing. There's a very big difference in that. You still like the person. It's not no to them. It's no to the thing, the unhealthy thing. But it's not just people. It's places, too, right? We want to avoid triggering places, buffets, unhealthy restaurants, bars, whatever it might be, whatever your environment is that triggers unhealthy things. I'm going to break in here just a second because Bill always has a good one on, on the saying no and uh, to people, and uh, I think we're talking about a pie, but uh, you want to share that, Bill? Sure, I always see myself in situations where it's friends and family, they've made something special for me. And I have to say, I'll, I'll, sometimes I say, I'll just take a bite, but I'm trying to work on myself and trying to make healthy choices. and. I, I know you made this pie because you love me and I love you, but I'm not going to eat it. Is that what you mean, Fred? Yes. And then one one more step, and that was that I appreciate if you would support me in my endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. If they get if you get any pushback, which sometimes you will, especially if it's family, it's just say I I really need help. Mm -hmm. I I've, I've gotten to this. I'm in this condition because I've not gotten good at saying no to things that are harmful to me. And pie is one of them. Would you help me 
make this change that would be good for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry about putting you on the spot there. No, no, no. Very okay. good. You want to Very take good. control of your environment. That means eliminating triggers from your household, from the workplace, from your car. That's a big one that people don't realize. There's a lot of triggers for habits that happen in our car. Um, uh, drive throughs things like that. There's cup holders. Jeez, there used to be cigarette lighters in cars, right? Talk about a trigger <laughs> for an unhealthy habit. So let's move on to the second A, dealing with the cue. Alter the cue. <coughs> now, you can change a trigger or a cue for a habit by changing the way you communicate and operate in your daily life. The most effective way is to be more assertive with your health. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family about how they can help you be healthy, right? Talk to them about what they can do to support you. You also want to manage your time and energy so you don't end up in a dire straight situation. This is a big one for me. If I find that I don't eat every two to three hours, I get hangry. Everybody knows what hangry is, right? Hungry, angry together. Oh boy, I'm a monster when that happens. And not only do I get hangry, I overeat if I haven't eaten over two to three hours. So I, I alter that cue by not allowing it to happen. The third A, dealing with cues, is adapt. Adapt to the cues by changing your expectations and your attitude all up here, right? If we make a mistake, look at the big picture. Will that matter in a month, in a year? Get back on track. Adjust your expectations. No one is perfect. Weight loss is not the only measure of success. Focus on your healthy habits. Sleep. Healthy mind. Healthy relationships. Show gratitude. That's a wonderful way to deal with those negative emotions we sometimes feel. Is to deal with them gratitude. And finally, the fourth way to deal with the cue, the trigger, is to accept that some cues are unavoidable. You don't try and control the uncontrolled, right? You know, there, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be uh, all of these cues that we run up against, and we need to accept that it's going to happen. We're going to get cued. We're going to get triggered. We're going to have urges, desires to do unhealthy things, eat unhealthy, stay up too late, procrastinate. Remind yourself that any challenge is just an opportunity for growth. Most importantly, get support. Get support. Call your coach. That's probably the best thing that you can do. So now that we've learned how to deal with the cue or the trigger, now let's deal with the craving. And we've seen this before. Stop, challenge, choose. So let's say you run into a cue, cues off this, uh, triggers this unhealthy desire to eat, go through the drive through get some McDonald's french fries, whatever your stuck habit might be. You stop, take a deep breath to center yourself, challenge the urge, challenge the craving. Why am I feeling like this? What outcome do I want? And then you get to choose an optimum response. Okay, so so far, we know how to deal with the cue. We do a 4A. We either uh, alter, we adapt, we accept, or we avoid. Now we're dealing with the craving. We stop, challenge, choose. Let's deal with the rewards. As I said before, every habit has a reward. Every habit provides something to you, either pleasure or relief. A habit might make you feel happy, satisfied, amused. It might make you feel comforted, calm, or relaxed. You need to understand what the habit is providing you before you're able to understand how to change it. Finally, the fourth part, you need to be able to deal with the routine. And you have to identify an alternative routine that provides a similar reward. This is very important when you're changing a habit, especially a difficult, stuck habit. If you change out a routine, a behavior, an unhealthy habit that makes you feel good with a healthy habit that doesn't make you feel good, it's not, they don't match, that's not going to work. Healthy habits need to provide rewards just like your unhealthy habits used to. 
So pick things that make you feel good, that make you feel pleasure, happiness, delighted, or relief, comforted, calm, relaxed. Finally, we need to develop a new identity. Remember, all of those things that we're telling ourselves are always, I'll never, I'm such a, figure out the person you want to be. If you want to be a healthy, vibrant, active, focused person, decide that's who you are, and then begin to act as if you are that person. This isn't fake it till you make it. This is about proving it to yourself with small wins. This is who I am. This is who I am now. I'm a healthy person now that enjoys sleep and loves drinking 64 ounces of water a day. And then you prove it to yourself really important to prove it to yourself, to show yourself, this is who I am. I am a healthy person. All right, so with, uh, with all that context and all that information, we need to ground this in a real example. So I'm gonna use me, my stuck habit. This is a habit that plagued me for years, staying up too late. I just, I just, I struggled with this so much, staying up too late, doing things, feeling like I'm missing out on something or, or I could do so much more if I get less sleep. And oh boy, it would always just leave me so exhausted, so run down, so fatigued. Okay, so I need to understand my habit, right? My habit is staying up too late. Okay, so I need to identify the cue first. So when this happens, when I say to myself, oh, I'll just watch one more episode, Netflix, or I'll just scroll through social media for a bit, Facebook, you know, these things, I get sucked into them. And that's the cue when I say to myself, just one more episode, or I'll just scroll through a little bit more. Well, then I feel, and here's the craving, I feel the urge to stay up, to put sleep off, to do the thing I want to do, right? Okay, so we've got the cue, we've got the craving. Now, what's the reward? I stay up late. I don't get enough sleep. I feel terrible, but I got to watch two more episodes of the you know, show on Netflix, or I got to scroll through Twitter for a little bit. Right? So that's the, that's the unhealthy habit. That's my stuck habit. But here's the thing. In the moment, what's the reward? What does it make me feel? I feel relaxed, relieved. And this is the important one. I get to turn my mind off. Has anybody ever felt that way? Doesn't that kind of feel like that's what you want? Let me just turn that mind off for a little bit, right? Well, that's what watching, binge watching TV or scrolling through social media would do for me. Right? That's the benefit. I had to understand that. And then, oh boy, here's my old identity. Here's what I used to tell myself. I've never needed as much sleep as ever needed. Why? I'm such a night owl. Mm -mm. I've always had trouble sleeping. Not true. These are the things that I thought were true because I chose to stay up. Right? I, I kept perpetuating this unhealthy habit. So it became part of my identity and got stuck. So how did I change this habit? How did I, well, I'll tell you this, I'm not 100% perfect. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> but when I do it well, how do I do it? This is what I do. First and foremost, I deal with the cues. Remember the four A's. Okay, so what do I do? I avoid the TV. I avoid the cell phone. I avoid any screens. I've got a bright line, right? I turn it off at that time. That's it. No more for the evening. I avoid the trigger. I altered the trigger by asking my wife for support. So if I were to say, oh, let's just watch one more episode, she will say to me, are you sure? Are you sure you want to watch another episode? Don't you want to go to sleep? Ah, thank you, wife. That's very supportive. Adapt. This one was crucial for me. I always saw sleep not as a restorative process, but something that got in the way of me doing other things reading another book, learning a new thing, helping another person, whatever I thought it was. 
But the next day, I was never my best self to do those things. So I had to become thankful for restorative sleep. I had to change that cue by being grateful. Finally, I had to accept by viewing this challenge as a chance to grow. This is my opportunity to do something different, to grow, to become a better person. So that's how I dealt with the tears. Next, I dealt with the craving, right? So whenever I get that craving that kicks off, oh, I just want to watch one more episode. I stop, take a deep breath, challenge. What am I feeling? I'm stressed. What outcome do I want? I want relief. Choose. I can get relief by journaling or reading and then going to bed. So I can choose an optimal response by dealing with the craving, the stop, challenge, choose. All right, then I had to deal with the routine. Remember, you have to replace the routine of the unhealthy stuff habit with a new healthy habit that makes you feel good, right? So that could be anything, reading, listening to uh, peaceful sounds, music, writing down my worries, journaling, or reminders for the next day, or sometimes spiritual meditative things, right? But remember, the new healthy routine needs to provide some reward or benefit to you. So what is that? Well, remember, I was, I'm stressed before I go to bed. I want relaxation. I want to turn my mind off. So I needed an alternative routine that provides similar rewards. For me, most of the time, it's reading. It's a wonderful way to feel relaxed, to turn my mind off. Now, I don't read, you know, Noam Chomsky or something like that before bed, something really intellectually challenging. Typically, I choose comic books <laughs> because they're fun, they're relaxing, and I can turn my mind off. Stress relief, wonderful, wonderful. Finally, I needed to change my new, I needed to change my old identity to a new identity. Who did I want to be? I wanted to become the type of person that makes sleep a priority. So that's my new identity. I am a person that loves sleep and makes it a priority. And I needed to prove that to myself with small wins. Stop the screen time earlier. Begin nighttime routine earlier. Get into bed. Get to sleep, get up, feel refreshed. Those small wins in that routine, I built from those. We could call those micro habits of health, right? I did one, practiced it, did one and two, practiced it, did one and two and three, practiced it, did one and two and three and four. You get the idea. Small wins to become this new person that loves sleep. So what did I do? I went from this habit of disease where it would be bedtime and I'd check social media or I'd watch another episode to feel relaxed to habit of health. When it's bedtime, now this says take a hot bath, which I have done before and is quite lovely. I, isn't that a wonderful relaxing picture there? But I choose to read them. So, uh, but whatever it is that provides the same relaxation. Remember, see, look at this. The reward has to be the same. Relaxation, relaxation, relaxation. It has to be the same in order for it to be successful. All right. So let's summarize here. Stuck habits, the ones that are really, really hard to change, the ones that feel like they're just a part of who you are. How do you change them? How do you overcome them? You have to first address all four habit components. You have to address the cue. That's the trigger. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the trigger that kicks off the unhealthy habit. You have to avoid it. You have to alter it. You have to adapt to it. And you have to accept it. You have to deal with the craving. That's the urge to perform the habit. You stop, challenge, choose to overcome the craving, and then choose a new healthy routine. That's the third thing. You have to choose a new healthy routine. That fourth thing provides you with a benefit or some reward. It has to be pleasurable or to provide relief. You have to make you, it has to make you feel good. 
right? Finally, and probably the most important thing to overcome a really, really stuck habit is develop a new identity. Here is who I am becoming, and here is the proof of my new identity. All right, so that's it. So now you guys have all the information you need to be able to change any stuck, difficult, identity-based habits that you might have. And uh, I hope that you all are able to have great success and take care. Have a great evening. Yeah, I, I really love that one because uh, Bill knows and uh, Ron knows that uh, I used to have a real issue with, with uh, sleeping. And so a lot of the tips in here help, helped uh, me sl uh, sleep much better. And uh, you also may wonder uh, how I figure out where to go when I'm going to go do something. And uh, this is what I use. I use, this is uh, uh, an atlas like uh, you or maybe your parents used to keep under the seat of the car. And uh, each page or two pages in there was a state. But on this one that I use, a detailed topographical map, uh, each page is 32 miles by 40 miles. So it covers a lot of territory and really get a lot of good detail. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because like we talked about at the beginning uh, or we talked about last week, you gotta have a plan if you wanna get where you're going. Now, this is uh, Oklahoma and uh, this is a picture I took out, out of the uh, Oklahoma uh, book. And this is, uh, we talked about this last fall. This is where we went down to Black Mesa. Uh, it's the last county on the Panhandle going west in Oklahoma. And this was a place where the Santa Fe Trail uh, crossed the road. It's the Santa Fe Trail National Historic Trail. And this was where I flew my drone and I could see the, I could see the trail, but on the ground we couldn't. And then when I went to Google Earth, you could follow this trail for miles and miles across the Oklahoma Panhandle. That was uh, really quite impressive. And this is where I'm planning on going, uh, May, May or June, somewhere in there. This is Fort Hall, Idaho. Fort Hall is close to, uh, Pocatello and uh, American Falls. And it's also close to a town called uh, Blackfoot where the National Potato Museum is, just in case you're interested. But this <clears throat> picture here, <laughs> this picture here shows where the Oregon Trail goes. And it shows the roads where you can go uh, to where it was and so you can see if you can see any uh, uh, ruts or anything like that. And so this is how I figure out where where I'm going to go and what I'm going to what I'm going to be doing. I plan my trip uh, well in advance. Now this is uh, this is a map of what the United States looked like uh, uh, during the uh, fur trade uh, rendezvous era, and that's 1825, 1840. <clears throat> and uh, you can see it's not very right south of. Uh, right south of uh, Idaho is Mexico. And part of Wyoming was Mexico at the time. <clears throat> now, this is uh, this is something I found today, always learning something. But uh, I was looking at a video today and it's talking about the Sublette cutoff. Sublette, William Sublette was one of the uh, mountain men that uh, uh, got started early in, in the mountain, uh, the fur trade. And then he became a partner in the uh, setting up the rendezvous. The rendezvous is where they would bring uh, supplies from St. Louis uh, up into the mountains so that the, the mountain men wouldn't have to go all the way back to St. Uh, Louis with their furs. They could just meet there. Uh, then they would trade uh, with the merchants for different things and then they'd get all set up for the uh, uh, next winter. They'd get all the supplies that they needed and everything like that. And uh, but this is the Santa Fe Trail. Uh, right here is the Santa Fe Trail, and this one up here is the uh, Oregon Trail. Now, it wasn't called the Oregon Trail to start with. It was called Sublette Trace. 
because he was there early enough that he went back and forth and he found a route that uh, uh, that worked best. And uh, it was called a San, uh, it was called the uh, Sublet Trace. Now, when they started taking vehicles, uh, wagons, and going to the Oregon Territory, then it become the Oregon Trail. So that's something that I did I didn't know, but it starts it starts right here at uh, Independence, and it goes down uh, the Santa Fe Trail for forty miles, and then it takes off, and uh, it goes over to Topeka, crosses the Kansas River, and then goes north up to uh, the Platte River at Kearney, Kearney, Nebraska. And that's what we did last fall. We followed it from about uh, northern Kansas into the middle of Wyoming, following the Oregon Trail, which is really, really a lot of fun. Now, this is a blow-up picture of uh, Wyoming. Uh, the black dot is Pinedale. I have a picture of it that is coming right along. And last uh, last fall, we went to Riverton. This is Riverton right here. This is the, the Bighorn Mountains. This is the Wind River Range. Wind River Range goes north and turns into the uh, Teton National uh, Park, and it goes into Yellowstone. But uh, we're going to go back this year, and we're going to go into uh, this area here and uh, follow the Oregon Trail on into uh, Oregon and, War and Washington. So that's the plan. That's what I'm working on. Now, here's a picture of uh, uh, Pinedale. That's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It really yes, is. Really. And, and on the other side of these mountains is uh, Riverton. And they had uh, rendezvous there also, and they had them here, and they had them down the <clears throat> west of here, down to Grant, uh, the Green River, had them down in that neighborhood. So we're kind of covering that too. One of the things we're going to do while we're at the uh, uh, Pinedale's, we're going to the Museum of the Mountain Man, because I, I love good museums, and uh, so that's kind of what we're planning on doing. And uh, it's just like right now, I'm planning on make, uh, making a trip with uh, Ron. We're going to uh, the Wichita, Wichita Mountains. Always have trouble pronouncing that. It's kind of like Wichita, only Wichita, without a W on it. Uh, the mountains to go hiking, and we're going to do that in April. And then uh, right after that, uh, we're going to Texas for the total eclipse. So uh, that's it. I'm going to stop the share at this point. And I'm going to stop the recording. So, But if anybody has any questions, uh, they can always get in touch with uh, Ron, uh, Bill, or myself.